So I've been all electric since January of 2018 with two Teslas, a Model S and a Model 3. But as you can see, I also have my old 99 Tacoma behind me because I have a house and I go on surf trips and it's just much more convenient. Now, we don't have many good options yet for an electric truck, but there are a lot coming out soon. So I thought we can just have a look now at what we know and what's rumored and what's upcoming in the electric truck space to see which one is actually the best. Let's go. Trucks outsell every other type of vehicle in the US by far and have done so since 2013. In 2018, light trucks outsold cars two to one in the US with just under 12 million sold and a gap that appears to be widening between the two. Of those, the Ford F Series is by far the most selling truck in the USA with over 900,000 sold in 2018, which is nearly double the next best selling truck, the Chevy Silverado. So the Ford F Series is clearly the target for Tesla. And when they make a vehicle in a new category, they don't just make a practical one, they come out swinging. Remember the semi? They could have made a simple small delivery van, but no, they came out with a class eight truck capable of towing more than any other vehicle on the road. And even the Model S, the first sedan that they came out with, became a best-selling luxury sedan due to its incredible features. So that's why I think it makes sense here to look at the F-150. It is essentially the gold standard in trucks sold in the United States. But there's also Rivian, who already is taking reservations and just recently raised $700 million in funding led by Amazon. So we kind of have a Bezos versus Musk thing going on here. But in reality, it's everyone versus Ford in this space. Even Chevy is miles behind them when it comes to their annual sales volume. So let's see how these three different trucks stack up. First, let's see Rivian, since we have actual specs released by them. The Rivian R1T comes in with a 400 mile range, 11,000 pounds of towing capacity, a 1,763 pound payload, and support for 160 kilowatt charging via the CCS port. This is a pretty impressive truck out of the gate, one that certainly impressed me and many other people in the media. They report 750 horsepower, which is impressive, and 14,000 newton meters of torque, which I'm not sure what that'll actually be when they convert it into the pound feet we're typically using when comparing automobiles because we don't know the exact gear ratio which we need to actually convert that. They have some really cool features here with the gear tunnel, a really big frunk, the fold down rear gate, built in air compressors, and power outlets in the bed. They're taking deliveries now with arrivals expected to be late next year in 2020. And now let's see how that stacks up to the F-150. The thing about the F-150 is there are so many different trim options that it's really difficult to just nail it down. So what I'm kind of looking at here is the max specs from them. So we start out with 450 horsepower and 410 pound feet of towing. That's a 12,000 pound towing capacity with a 3,000 pound payload, pretty impressive. Now the price range, again, because there are so many options, go all the way from 28,000 up to 67,000 before adding any of the additional options you can get. And we typically don't talk about range of gas cars because they can fill up essentially anywhere, but this one, when calculating it out, comes out to about 570 miles on a single tank, which is pretty good. And the F-150 also has some really cool features, such as a driver assist program, similar to Tesla's autopilot, backup assist, which is great when you have a trailer and you're trying to weave maybe a boat into a specific area, in-vehicle Wi-Fi, which lets you connect to up to 10 devices to the 4G LTE signal, Alexa integration, and Waze integration with the navigation system. Now, of course, you can buy this now and get it within days or weeks, depending on your area. And lastly, let's bring in Tesla. Now, before I go further with the specs that we have here, just a caveat that all of these were collected from either tweets directly from Elon or statements he's made in interviews. Tesla hasn't officially unveiled any of this stuff, so a lot of these things may change. So just take some of these with a grain of salt. So starting out, Elon has stated that the Tesla truck will have a four to 500 mile range, maybe more with a towing capacity of 300,000 pounds, which is one of those things that you may question until you remember the video of a Tesla Model X pulling a Boeing 787 Dreamliner. So this actually could happen. 
Elon has also said it will be a big truck, which means it will likely compete directly with the F-150 or one of the more heavy duty vehicles used on construction sites. It's unclear what the price is for this vehicle, but likely because it's Tesla and because of these specs, it's gonna be very expensive. Elon has said it will be a six seater. It will be a dual motor all wheel drive vehicle, which kind of makes sense. And it will have 250 volt connections in the bed for heavy duty tools, along with an air compressor. We're hoping to see an unveiling this summer, but it's really unclear when that will happen, nor do we have any idea when they'll start to deliver them. The earliest they could really possibly hope to get these in people's hands is late 2020, which does match up with Rivian, and I think would be a good target for them to shoot for. So when you compare these three, it definitely looks like Tesla and Rivian have a big hill to climb here. The F-150 not only has amazing specs and really cool features already built in, it has been the best selling truck for a long time. So you have a really strong brand loyalty there, just like Tesla and others do as well. And that isn't to mention that Ford themselves are reportedly working on an electric version of the F-150. We won't likely be able to see that, however, until late 2020 when the overall model, the F-Series, gets an updated design. But what it really comes down to, I think, for any of these options to succeed is the availability of a strong charging network. Tesla obviously has the advantage here with the supercharger network now covering large chunks of the US and over 12,000 superchargers worldwide, which includes Europe and Asia, plus many more on the way, likely to double that amount in 2019 alone. But there are others out there as well. Specifically, one to look out for is Electrify America. Electrify America is a charging network that's popping up all over the US recently and has a 10 year plan to invest over $2 billion in EV infrastructure and education programs in the United States. They offer fast charging stations and are continually expanding their network across the country. And there are other charging networks out there such as EVgo, which already have a decent infrastructure in popular cities with fast charging systems that will rival Tesla's. However, the overall number of them is substantially lower than the supercharger network. So while Tesla clearly has the advantage on the charging network now, it's one that I don't think will really be that big of a deal going forward as these other networks start to build out their infrastructure. So if Tesla wants to win here, they need to offer a compelling vehicle, which is kind of a no brainer. We know they'll do that, but it also needs to come in at an affordable price. That's more difficult to do because of the sheer cost of the batteries needed in a bigger vehicle like this. And they need to deliver it on time, which admittedly is not their strong suit. And if Rivian wants to win in this space, they should look for a good partner and team up with some of these other big companies to fill in the gaps in their offering, notably the charging network, then keep pushing hard to deliver these trucks on time. And of course with Ford, if they're able to deliver a compelling electric F-150 and partner with some of these bigger charging networks or just flat out buy them, I think they could continue their dominance in this space, which might actually be a reasonable outcome considering their recent radical shift away from making cheap sedans and focusing on SUVs and trucks. But their biggest challenge by far, I believe, will be having enough batteries that are of high enough quality to power these new trucks. So who has the best shot at winning this race? It's hard to say. Tesla, I think, has some advantages with the brand loyalty and the supercharger network, but their inability to get things out on time could really kind of put them behind. Ford, with their vast resources and legacy in this space, do, I think, have a, a strong advantage, but need the ability to get the batteries in and make all that happen, which, as we've seen from other major automakers, is not really a walk in the park. And Rivian, now with Amazon backing them, I think has a legit shot here, but there are still a lot of kind of unknowns in the process from where they're at now to actually having these cars on the road. So it's gonna be an interesting journey, and one I hope you'll stick with me, because uh, like all things, you know, this is fun to see this transition we're going through from uh, you know gas-powered, diesel kind of a burn into a more sustainable form of transportation. So let me know what you guys think down below. Who do you think will win and why? I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this. And lastly, don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys back here next time. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you like data, want to learn more, maybe even make a career out of it, I have a free course to help you kickstart your data professional career. It's a part of the FTD Academy, the Free the Data Academy, and it's free to you. You can go check it out, learn more, and sign up at ftdacademy.com.